All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the GSTL, the GSL Team League. I'm Moltrap. With me is Kaldor, and today we are witnessing a match between NS Hosa and Incredible Miracle, and we're going to be interviewing the coaches of those teams right now. Yeah, we need to have a quick interview, and let's see what those who are thinking after the first match. Obviously, uh, we have a pretty happy coach uh, for Yoda. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 with the first yeah. yeah. outcome of the first game. Yeah. 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 All right. uh, the IM coach says that when they practiced, they never even thought about losing today. Never considered it. Every player wanted to play first because they were all very confident. Yeah. The NSOSA coach says that Sage practiced very hard for today's match, but unfortunately he lost. And he hopes that Sage is not too disappointed. Yeah,我们的朋友也非常亲切。我们的朋友也非常亲切。我们的朋友也非常亲切。我们的朋友也非常亲切。我们的朋友也非常亲切。我们的朋友也非常亲切。我们的朋友也非常亲切。我们的
that they are actually that he's actually trying to uh, at least banter him a little bit. Of, of course, they are friends, but this was pretty cool. Yeah, something and that we're not really used to. No, no, definitely not. Not in this uh, climate. And the I am coach has a little bit of a advantageous position to speak from as well. His team is up one to zero, and next up is going to be Yoda versus Seal. And Yoda is very, very strong against Zerg players. I was looking at it, and if you just look at his record, it's kind of uh, a little bit uh, deceiving because he has lots and lots of losses to Lenok. He meets Lenok every single season. Lenok knocked him out of Code A July, knocked him out of Code A August, knocked him out of the up and downs in October. And so he always loses to Lenok, but... He's beaten almost every other Zerg he's ever played. So Yoda, that's maybe why he's feeling very confident against Seal. Despite the fact that, what were you saying, didn't they uh, meet before? They met before. They, it was a KSL match where they met, I think it was in the quarterfinals of one of the tournaments in the first season. And, uh, well, he actually lost. So yeah, that's something that he might get revenge for today in uh, the team league here, the GSTL. And the first, well, not the first game, uh, the map, but the second map will be Daybreak. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see what exactly a seal has up his sleeve. Certainly, could have imagined a couple of different maps here. But, yep, Daybreak is not too bad. So a little bit of a macro map. We don't really see a rush all that often. Sometimes a little bit of Roach Baneling aggression, but only occasionally. Usually both players will just try to go for the macro game. And the game is about to start in a few seconds. And as Hosa against Incredible Miracle with the second game today, here we have our two players. There they are, Yoda on the right, coming off of a fresh victory against Sage. He's beaten a Protoss, can he beat another Zerg? And look at this, Seal has a 100% win rate on Daybreak in the GSL Team League, so he must be feeling really confident about this particular match. Yoda, on the other hand, he looked really, really pleased when he heard about his next opponent. And yeah. one thing that the Incredible Miracle just said is that they were all really eager to um, get out there as the first player and to open uh, the team match. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting. They are really eager to compete here. And Seal certainly has to be careful. Yola, Yola seems to be in really good shape today. Yes, indeed. All right, the game has begun, ladies and gentlemen. Can Yoda get a second win and bring his team one step closer to victory, or will Seal tie it up? We're about to find out right now. GSL. To the top right of Daybreak in the red color, we have starting for the NS Hosa team in the second match. NS Hosa, Seal! Currently, Incredible Miracle is up one game, 1-0, uh, one, zero, uh, one, zero, and at the bottom left we have, in the blue color, the starting player of Incredible Miracle was able to take the first point. I am Yoda! And right away we already have Seal. Look at those fingers moving fast. We already have Seal uh, moving his Overlord around the map, sort of around the top left. I like that he's looking for any proxies in that area, and he's not going to be putting it in a location where sometimes we see players will send their overlords directly to the Terran's expansion, and the Terran puts their barracks there, floats it, and kills the overlord. It can be a very big hit early on. So Seal wants to play safe, he wants to avoid that fate. He plays very safe. He also sends out a drone scout in order to scout for proxies, has a quick look everywhere before heading into uh, the um, um, to the base of his opponent. We have him with the usual opening with a 14 hatch 15 hatchery. And the one thing to look at the look at this drone, it's, it's scouting it's going everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, he really, really doesn't want to get caught by any proxies. He is checking all over the map with his overlord and his drone. Very smart play, but uh, yeah, very prudent. Extremely, extremely safe. He knows that nothing's gonna catch him off guard and as a result he is able to go hatch first before getting his pool, although he wasn't too greedy with the drone count before getting his pool. No, he plays a very, very stable game here, and I like it. He plays very careful against his opponent. So he's now on the main base, just scouting a bit, sees no gas, and immediately leaves. Tries to dodge the marine, and uh, is actually able to keep his, yeah, his drone alive, and spot the expansion at the low ground. Spots the expansion, placed on the low ground, so he knows exactly what's going on right now. 
He's scattered all over the map. There's no proxies. He's in good shape. Extremely, extremely safe play here, and it pays off for him. Well, a little bit, I guess. I really like this map for this matchup. It's really interesting, and there are a lot of transitions that you go uh, can uh, go into in the late game. We have seen Ultralisks, we've seen Broodlords. Broodlords are quite often uh, the better choice because you can control the middle of the map a lot more easily, especially when you uh, try to take the one of the two bases in the middle of the map, either to the top or the bottom. You can just pressure one of them uh, with your Broodlords or defend as well. So this is a little bit more of a viable option, and you are more flexible. When you use Ultralisks, you have to be careful that you don't clump your ultralisk at the choke points. There are a lot of high and low ground situations as well, especially when uh, you expand into the middle of the map and take one of these two bases with single gas and th uh, five mineral patches, then you have to be uh, careful. So at this point we have just now getting uh, the gas for Seal and Yoda as well. You can also try to uh, be a bit sneaky on this map as Terran. We've seen players go for double factory uh, react um, reactors, something that I don't really think is going to happen here. But with the choice that you makes. He's going for probably a reactor nonetheless trying to get the Hellions out. I mean, he delays them a little bit and that's the reactor just building it now. Uh, we've seen for quite a long time Reactor Factory Hellion opening into expand. He kind of reverses the order and therefore gets this expansion a bit earlier but is not able to pressure that hard with his uh, Hellions obviously. Yeah, to go back to what you were saying before, we usually see Broodlords on the map if it gets that late in the game and sometimes we do see this map go that late in the game because it is daybreak. Very easy to defend your expansions and he is going to be going for just the single factory reactors, aliens, and getting another command center actually as well. So he is just going to go heavy on the econ to start off with. May not take a third base right away but he'll at least be able to drop extra mules out of that. When you have the situation that the map is split between uh, the two players and you are up on four to five bases, we usually see the Terran player even going for ghosts with nukes. There are a couple of very interesting spots on this map. For example, it's talking about the starting position uh, for Yoda here at the bottom left. From his main base, he can nuke the expansion ex immediately to his right, so he can nuke across the small abyss that we have here and deny mining on this expansion. Uh, this turns out to be quite a nuisance for a Zerg player if he wants to expand here. So uh, a couple of very interesting positions for nuke placements and this is why we uh, see nukes in the late game and ghosts even though ghosts have been nerfed in the recent patch in order to make snipe a little bit more well a little bit less strong especially against Zerg. They were just too good against Ultralists and Group Lords. Yep, that's of course, you know, looking 20 minutes down the line here. So far, we're not going to get uh, anywhere near that just yet. We have the Hellions poking a little bit, and a very nice wall being put up by Seal to stop those Hellions from getting in to the expansion, into the main, very killing drones. Very nice that we see the cancel on the tumor, so he realized that uh, Hellions are about to take it out. And uh, this is something that still a lot of Zerg players miss, so he casts the Tumor immediately and uh, as soon as the Hellions leave he places it down once again. And he's playing very safe here, he has a macro hatch, he's on two bases now, not taking the third just yet. The Tumor finally dies nonetheless, but we now have to tech to tier 2, he's going for Banelings, he's safe, uh, it doesn't matter what comes, he will be safe against it, even the Banshees that are now arriving will uh, face a lot of Queens, so very very solid and stable opening for Seal. He will get a third base quite soon, but at this point he is safe against anything that Yoda can throw against him. Yep, and he is doing very well with that creep spread. As you mentioned before, he's got a lot of creep tumors on the map. Here comes the Banshee though, into the back of the main, and it looks like it's going to get pushed out without too much damage done. He of course did not upgrade Cloak, so nothing too scary there, although we do have him putting down spores, spore crawlers, in order to detect that just in case it was going to Cloak, and also just to kind of provide additional anti-air. We have a very, very um, nice Overlord positioning, by the way, for Seal. He does not only have the Overlord's positions outside of his main base and at the expansion to spot drop play, but at the same time he has two at the left side of the map and one oh. already at the bottom so that he can spot drops as soon as they emerge from the Terran player's main base, which is very, very smart. So kind of a double safety net against drop play. Speedlink's almost caught those Hellions on the map, but they did not actually catch up. I like how Seal already has a group of, whoa, never mind. I was going to say Zerglings waiting for a counterattack, but he's actually morphing 18 Banelings outside of 
incredible miracle Yoda's base, and he's rallied over some speedlings as well. He is going to go for a bit of a bust here before Yoda can really get his economy booming, before he can get enough units out, and his door is down. His Marines are out in the open. This is the worst case scenario. He stims, he tries to split, but there's so many Bane Leaks. Everything is going to die so quickly. He does not have the speed upgrade for the Bane Leaks just yet, but it's not like he needs it. He's getting into the main base now, still a few Bane Leaks alive. At this point, we don't have Combat Shield yet for Yoda, which is a huge upset for him. He's losing oh, quite yeah. a lot of harvesters here. Another Bane Leak detonates, but look at all these Zerglings just going at it. Reinforcements streaming in, and at this point, we have 34 additional Zerglings being built. Impressive aggression here by Seal. He's getting a third base behind it, so he attacks and expands. Very well played, and he takes down 16 Harvesters. Beautiful, beautiful work. Takes down 16 Harvesters, and takes down basically the entire army of Yoda, but did he do enough damage though? He didn't actually take out too many tech, he didn't take out any buildings really except a few depots, which Yoda lost enough units that he's not supply blocked. And he's still got several barracks, three with reactors on them. So he can start putting out a lot of units, but will the second wave polish him off? Bailings oh. are gonna almost land, but the lift up saves several Marines there. Oh my god, the if he loses SCVs, the SCVs, oh. and that's exactly what happens. The Banelings now have speed and get in there. 42 workers killed in total, yeah. and now he transitions into Mutalist. The that Spire is ready, the third base is close to finish, and this is horrible for Yoda here. Yeah, he, he actually had enough SCVs to survive after that first attack, but the second attack killed all but four of his SCVs. He has been crippled, not even... Terran player can have an economy after that much loss. Look at this, even got Zerglings killing mules here in the main. And this is compared to 57 drones on the map. There are mutas coming out as well right now. The play that Yoda chose here, he had Siege. very late siege tanks with siege mode, and uh, this is just so painful. When you don't have siege tank, it is so hard to defend against such a strong attack, especially with the Bane Links. You can't defend with the Marines only, and the well, the wall in is kind of cute, but with only supply depots and one bunker, it is not enough to stop 20 Bane Links, and especially the second attack was just too much for him to handle. So Seal, he ties the series up 1-1, one one, takes the game of Yoda off Incredible Miracle. And well played, very well played on Daybreak here. Yeah. yeah, very nicely done. Um, Yoda being very, very greedy, going for those three command centers very early, having not too much defense, and we had Seal just basically find the exact right pull in this timing, hit him right before he was about to start putting out a ton of units, right before he was able to produce a lot, when he only had maybe two dozen Marines on the map and a few Hellions. Hit him with a big hammer, composed of Banelings and Zerglings, and that did the trick. The one thing that really missed for me was just he delayed his tech by quite a bit. So he didn't have siege tanks out yet. He uh, was focusing on his bio upgrades yeah. first. You can definitely go for three command sense, but you have to have the siege tank out. It's a little bit the same that we face when you go for a two-base roach and baneling attack. It's very hard to defend against it when you have, don't have a siege tank up. But we've seen, for example, Thorzane play against Idra on uh, maps like in uh, Tiga, where you go for the very, very third early um, command center, and then you can just defend against it when you have this one or two siege tanks on the high ground. You can target yeah. down the banelings and suddenly your wall in uh, will be in a position where you can actually defend if you repair with uh, a few SCVs but when you don't have anything to take down the banelings then uh, you are in a position where you just can't defend your wall gets busted usually as soon as two or three of the supply depots die you are supply blocked as well you can't reproduce and this is very very tough especially with the second wave not being stopped by anything yeah. at the end we had Yoda with a siege tank he already had the uh, tank upgrade well the siege upgrade nearly completed but not just quite yet and uh, that's the, exactly the timing when Seal hit with his second attack. But he was already preparing the follow-up. He had the third base yeah. up, and at this time we saw him uh, building the first set of Mutalists. So a very, very nice play here. So who is Incredible Miracle going to send out next to deal with Seal? Yoda was confident against Zerg. Who else on the bench feels confident? And I think is that Seed is going to be sent out next to deal with him. Kodas player, Protoss. And he will face him on Calm Before the Storm. Very nice. A map that is loathed by Zerg players. It is a horrible map. 
uh, for Zerg, and that's exactly <laughs> why C chooses it. He knows that on this map he has a very, very good chance. We've seen this map in uh, ZVP and ZVT in the past, and a lot of Zerg players are really kind of desperate to find some kind of strategy that works. We've seen very interesting strategies because of this. We've seen three base before pool, which is kind of awesome. We've oh, seen wow, yeah. Nidus network attacks. We've seen uh, players on one base just kind of trying it with a six or a seven pool. It is just very hard to play because you usually have a problem as soon as you face a Terran or a Protoss that is able to get an easy third. And this is exactly what Come Before the Storm was designed for, the long macro game. And it's going to be interesting to see what Seal is trying to do in order to defend C. He's up against a Code S player now, and this is not going to be easy. No, it will not. It's going to be quite difficult. Seed did very, very well in his up and down matches. And we're going to find out. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Seal versus Seed. It's going to be fun. We're going to be twisting our tongues around that combination of names. As but, uh, long as it's not as it's as long as it is not Nama against Mana, I'm happy. Well, Maru versus Maro. That is actually not too bad. Maru against Yeah, you're Maru, right. Mar you concentrate a little Mana bit. Mana versus Nama is worse. You're right. Yeah, you're always like Mana Mana. <laughs> the entire time, it is horrible. And if it's the best of seven, the final of the dream hack ages ago, oh my god, oh casting this was quite hard. But we are headed into the game, ladies and gentlemen. Zerg versus Protoss. We have Seed against Seed.